So how do we do um, a surface integral when the surface is given to us as a level set? So we have some function of three variables set equal to some constant, and that's what's creating our surface. Well, the first thing is to tie that um, surface in three dimensions back to some flat region. So what we're going to want to do is to um, find some way to project or cast the shadow of this surface onto one of the coordinate planes. So we could either project down the z-axis and get the shadow here, right? Or, um, well, that's not a very good shadow. Let's see. That's better. If we project down the z-axis, so we would get a shadow here. And we could also project down the y-axis, so that would give us a shadow here. One problem with this is that you can see for each point there are actually two points on the surface, whereas if we were checked down in this case, we only have one point on the surface for every point in the region. Or we could also um, project back along the x-axis and see the shadow back here. So whichever, whatever our surface is, we're going to try to find some convenient way to project that surface onto one of the coordinate planes, either the xy plane or the um, xz plane or the yz plane, so that we have a two-dimensional region. Our next question is, if you have a little patch of area, um, delta A, down here in the shadow, how does that correspond to a little patch of surface, delta sigma? What's the relationship? Now, um, if we look at it kind of end on, we have this little patch of surface, and then it's casting a shadow, which is the little rectangle here. So we have the surface here, delta sigma, and um, the shadow is a little bit of area, delta A. And we could actually determine what the area of the shadow is if we just knew the angle between the normal to the surface and to the direction that we projected down. So we'll call this vector p, and then this is going to be um, the normal, which if you, have a, if you have a function defined as a level set, the normal can just be found from, uh, from the gradient. So, so we could just take gradient f, and that will find a normal, because the normal is always perpendicular to the level set. Now just to kind of see the relationship between the gradient and the projection direction and the angle and the area of the shadow as compared to the area of the original surface. I have a little demonstration here. So I have this piece of surface here, and then the red line is the shadow that it casts down below. And you can see as I change the, here's our normal to the surface, and this is a vector that represents the direction we're projecting down, right? So projecting this vector here um, along the um, axis there is our projection direction. And as I change the angle between them, when the angle between them is 0, then the area of the shadow is just as big as the area of the surface. But as I tilt that angle up, you can see that the area shrinks, right? Until if I tilt it so that the angle between the normal and the projection vector is 90 degrees, then we get 0 area. So what function do you know that is 0 when you have 90 and it's 1 when you have an angle of 0? That would be the cosine, right? So there's a relationship between the area of the shadow and the area of the patch of surface and the cosine of the angle. So that relationship would be this. The, the area of the patch of the shadow is equal to the area of the surface times the cosine of the angle between um, the projection direction and the gradient f. Now actually because of dot products, well, that would also tell you that uh, the, the, the area of the, pa the patch of surface is um, the area in the shadow divided by the cosine of the angle. Now if you want to find the angle between um, the gradient of f and the projection direction p, Let's assume we have that p as a unit vector. It just represents the direction we're projecting on. If we project down the z-axis, then um, p equals k, right? the unit vector in the z-direction. Um, but if we project down, um, down the x-axis, then p would be i. Or if we project down the y-axis, p would be j. But in each case, p is going to be a unit vector. If you want to measure the angle between two vectors, you take their dot product. So you do f dot p, and you get um, the magnitude, or yeah, the the length of the first times the length of the second. This projection will always do as a unit vector uh, times the cosine of the angle in between them. So the cosine of the angle in between them is equal to 
um, well, that's not a bold, right? the, the gradient of f dotted with the, the uh, projection direction p divided by the length of the gradient of f. And that's the cosine of the angle between them. So to find our area conversion factor, we need 1 over the cosine. So 1 over the cosine would be the gradient of f over uh, the gradient of f dotted with the projection direction times the original area of the surface. This is how we can, given the area of the shadow, we could multiply by this, and this would give us the area of the original surface. So the conversion factor then is, if you have a surface given as a level set, the conversion factor is the length of the gradient divided by the gradient dotted with p. Now this conversion factor should should be positive. This dot product is a scalar already. We'll just need to take its absolute value. This stands for the length of the gradient, but this stands for the absolute value of the gradient f dot p. Since that's already a scalar, then this is just taking the absolute value. So there's our conversion factor if we have a level set. Let's um, do an example so you can see how this works. 